Diros, Tiros, there are also underground civilizations of non-humans that have been referred to as Diros and Tiros. The Tiros are more friendly and help keep the Diros, who are more demented, from having excessive power. They live underground in tunnels, cities, and sometimes under the sea. Most of the legends of the past of leprechauns and trolls refer to these non-humans from the inner earth. The Diros are competitors with the Greys, but they have similar qualities and cannot be trusted. The Government Connection Crisis management is a term used by the government to describe the scenario where a crisis situation is created and then the people are presented with solutions, usually three, which they would be reluctant to accept prior to the crisis. The solutions always involve the shoring up of security, which necessarily means the loss of some freedoms. When the situation has reached the crisis stage, it appears as if there is no other alternative. It appears as if the crises just happened rather than being carefully planned. Crises management is a way to create the illness for which the pill has already been invented. By creating a problem in order to supply a cure that would not have been acceptable without the problem, the government is able to manipulate the people, making it look as though it is benevolent in handling the situation on behalf of the people, when in fact it is directing the movement of the people along a specific path that has already been chosen. The current drug crisis is a case in point, although there is a connection to alien-based funding that makes it a very special scenario. A tremendous amount of information has linked the United States government with the drug trade since at least the 1960s. The Christic Institute filed suit but was successfully neutralized. The government information that is being released is a subtle form of convincing the public that the military must be used to do what is really the job of the local police. For the military to shoot down airplanes suspected of carrying drugs. For the military to be used in foreign countries. The coming currency call-in is related to drug money laundering. There is a continuing call for the banning of all firearms because of their use in criminal activity, particularly drug-related crimes. The ban on assault weapons will soon be extended to every gun. A declaration of martial law with the resulting major security upgrade to deal with the alien crisis will be much easier when these things occur. The drug situation started out as a social experiment back in the 1980s. There was a question of whether people could be controlled by the use of drugs and to what extent. There was at one time a belief that by getting the population hooked on drugs they would work at a cheap wage with only the reward of food, shelter, and drugs to keep them satisfied. The experiment, however, resulted in the realization that those on drugs are not satisfied with working. They want to steal from others and are willing to become violent to do so. The experiment also revealed that while crime increases in the United States would justify creating a police force, the economic structure at that time was not sound enough to pay for such a police force. The entire concept became less appealing and more hazardous to the government. The experiment ran its course and yielded little in terms of the controlling effects that were desired. The side benefit, however, was billions of dollars in profits from the selling of drugs. The drug situation has assisted the funding of the aliens in building their underground civilization. Much of this money has gone into helping them in their efforts to establish bases underground. In exchange, the United States got technology a promise that the aliens would not go to war with the United States or other countries of the world. Ha! <laughs> the aliens gave the United States and the Soviet Union particle beam weapons, laser technology, stealth technology, some supercomputer technology, information on cloning, and synthetic genetic duplication of humans, some medical breakthroughs, and technology associated with frequencies, vibrations, and the electromagnetic spectrum such as ELF waves and railgun technology. The techniques of interdimensional travel have still been kept secret from humans. About 15 percent of human genetic coding has been researched by universities in the United States 
It has allowed them to splice, remove, delete, and add to the genetic code in order to change it. It can be used for destroying or creating diseases, destroying or creating plants, animals, and other life forms, anything that may be tampered with genetically. This effort to map out and decode all the DNA available is one of the reasons that many of the creatures on level 6 of the Dulce base were created or altered genetically. There has recently been a breakthrough in the need for blood by these aliens, and that cattle blood has been altered so it suits their needs. It is a side effect from the experimentation that involved the cattle mutilations. Much of the blood and tissues that they need could be supplied from slaughterhouses, and there would be no more mutilations. There has been a continuing massive effort to fund the aliens through various means, not only drugs, but manipulated oil prices and other methods, to keep them pacified long enough to determine how best to deal with them. The choice was to coexist with them while secretly expanding the country's technologies in order to deal with them in the event of a conflict. This has given greater time for the technology of humans to close the gap with the technology of the aliens. It has been assessed that in recent years that the aliens have not been honoring the treaties and agreements and therefore are not to be trusted. The effort to cut off their funding has begun and one of the routes for cutting off funding is to shut down the drug traffic and the influx of money from the drug cartel. Noriega was one of those involved in helping set up the money chain that assisted the aliens. His arrest is a strong signal that the pipeline of money to the aliens will no longer be open. The Colombian cartel is also ceasing operations. The shutting down of the drug cartel is a first step in removing the power of the aliens and pulling back from the agreements. Government projections indicate that pulling support from the clandestine drug trade will curtail the United States drug problem by 1993 unless it is artificially stimulated again as a pretext to martial law. It may not be necessary, however, if the release of certain information makes national security paramount. It must be understood that there was an enormous problem for the government when it discovered that the Earth was actually being held hostage to an alien influence and that there was no reasonable technology for dealing with this in alien influence. President Truman made a considerable effort to engage in combat with these aliens, but the technology of the United States at the time was not advanced enough to even begin to have an effect. Therefore, the only option short of total obliteration of the human race in an all-out war was to form agreements for building, expanding, and funding these bases. Americans may judge harshly the government for its action, but it was put in a very difficult and desperate situation in regard to national security. One more choice was to inform the people. Projections were that they would become outraged, perhaps destroying the very fabric of society Mobs were projected to demand military action against a force which the government knew would be far superior. Projections also indicated people would demand the resignations of persons in office. They would be perceived as having been making deals with an alien enemy without the people knowing of this. Under normal circumstances and under the Constitution, that could be classed as treason. The government has functioned in a manner it perceived to be in the best interest of humankind. Huh. Yet it has also been put in a predicament whereby it could be misjudged as having worked in collaboration with a foreign invading army. Amen. Had the government opposed the invaders, however, it would have led to mass destruction of humanity. Even nuclear weapons had little usefulness in dealing with foreign invaders on our own soil. The public cannot begin to understand what these people have gone through in terms of soul-searching and trying to find the best way to deal with the crises which they were forced to manage. The option of informing the people appeared less viable and workable than to silently make negotiated deals with the aliens to keep them pacified over a period of time in an attempt to find a peaceful way of coexistence. MJ-12 and those who have been subordinate feel they have done everything possible and appropriate for the intense situation of hosting 
aliens with much greater technology on the earth. It has done all it felt was proper to preserve peace and to gain information from the aliens in order to develop higher technology. It has also hidden vital information and shielded certain knowledge when necessary from the aliens in order to create weaponry that may be used against them in the event of conflict. There is now some division and debate between those in the upper echelons as to whether they should simply inform the people of the problem or continue to keep it quiet. Until this debate swings one way or the other, it is relatively hazardous to release too much information on this. If it is decided that this information must be kept quiet, many of the sources that are releasing this information will become targets for harassment or assassination. But the scenario now reveals that unless information is released by the authorities and is accepted by the vast majority of people, most Americans will not accept the information from an individual that claims to have inner knowledge of the government's cover-up. There was an attempt to test whether the public would panic at the thought of invasion from aliens. It was the radio broadcast of Orson Welles in 1938. The public reacted with panic and many committed suicide. There is an effort now to condition the people to be more willing to accept an alien presence as a possibility using movies and television. Star Wars, E.T., Close Encounters of the Third Kind, Aliens, V, Alien Nation, and War of the Worlds. All of these are presenting various images and scenarios to condition the human mind to be open to what may soon be reality. The government does not direct a studio to make these movies or TV shows, but scripts are submitted by certain people who are silent partners with certain agencies to encourage the script to be used and help find funding sources to keep the script alive. The alien nation scenario conditions of the human mind to accept the presence of aliens who are relatively friendly and who can coexist with humans, war of the worlds, which contains a scenario of humanoid replicas and aliens living underground, shows the conflict between the aliens and humans. E.T. allows people not to be paranoid or fearful when thinking of aliens, as they may in fact be friendly. It gave people the capacity to deal with frightening information that may otherwise cause serious insecurity. Right now, there are so many different types of aliens being offered to the human mind that people can accept or reject any or all of them. People are gradually being conditioned to the possibility of being informed officially. If that comes, there will not be a great shock. In 1938, people did not have the preparation. And even though aliens on Earth were already a reality, they were not even prepared for a fictional representation. Only now are people being told about the plan to set up a moon base that would later lead to a Mars landing and a Mars base. There has been a moon base for quite some time in the crater Copernicus. The United States officially controlled the base until 1979 when it was learned that the aliens were working with both the Soviets and the Americans. The Soviets gained the advantage at that time and took over the base. But even though there are competitions here and there, much of the Cold War was actually a facade in order to extract huge sums of money for other purposes. Much of it was being diverted to developing technologies that have yet to be brought out and that may be needed in the event of a conflict. The Tesla approach has for many decades been ignored by the United States, but it has been developed and used in the Soviet Union. It is now being used in the United States as part of the Star Wars program to enhance and move further into the higher technologies. The Star Wars technology is essentially designed to assist in dealing with the alien factor and the potential conflict. The Soviets already have laser cannons, beam weapons, certain types of shielding fields, anti-detection fields that can be used to meet with other humans and speak about plans without being monitored by the aliens. Much of the apparent corruption of the government is actually based on this dilemma of how to deal with this alien situation.